I saw your book at blank under a sign that said new and recommended. <laughs> Guys. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hold Harmonics. I'm Jake. I'm Tienka. And this is... Brian. Brian Andrews. We've got another very special guest on the show today. Thanks for being here. Thank you like, for having me. Brian and I <laughs> have been friends for a long time. He's a very talented man, and I'm so glad that he said yes to come on our crazy, weird little show. <laughs> Thank you for thinking I'm interesting. <laughs> I do. I do but very much, in fact. Brian is a theater performer, an experienced choreographer, an ASL and deaf community advocate, and longtime Draco Malfoy actor <laughs> in the Fairly Potter franchise. He has a, a, a storied and illustrious career, and we're going to dive into it today. Can't wait. So I was thinking, like, preparing for this video, I was like, okay, when did we meet? When? We met 11 years ago. That's crazy. I was 19. Yeah. And I, yeah, it was 2013, the first Fairly Potter together at the Ziegfeld Theater, Ogden, Utah. I was Harry Potter, he was Draco Malfoy, and thus a rambunctious friendship was born. <laughs> we were in lots of shows together, a lot, Rock of Ages, a bunch of Fairlies. And there was actually a, a story I quickly wanted to bring up to remind you. I did Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. You know where this is going already. Yes, I do. 2016, I was an ensemble member, but I had a lot of like little little bit parts and a lot to do. Uh, I unfortunately, I got really sick, like so sick that I couldn't even walk. Like it was just some like gnarly flu. I was like, guys, I can't, I, like I can't perform. And so they're like, okay, well, Brian. <laughs> And yep. yeah, they called up Brian. Yep. Luckily, I had already seen the show like a million times. So yeah. I was already obsessed with watching you guys. So I kind of have an idea like yeah. what you did on stage. So, yep. But even still, like how how long <laughs> did you did it take? Like it was like a day or two, right? Yeah. I think they asked me Thursday afternoon and I went on Friday night, Saturday matinee and Saturday night. Oh, I That's didn't know that. That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he covered for me for a whole like weekend. A he learned an entire track in like a day <laughs> and there was like intensive choreography. Yeah. There was like, yeah. I had a bunch of like bit part lines mm -hmm. and like, that's just a testament to this, what this guy can do. It was it was very scary. So, but thank you for putting me through that. I I had sticky notes everywhere. Like I just I like had little reminders on like all my entrances and exits, and it was it was a blast. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he saved he saved the show. I did. It's um, on my resume because once I do not? more than one yes. show, then it's on my resume. So yeah, absolutely, <laughs> it should. I, I had to step in for Tyson Allred and do Lurch in the Adams Family oh for gosh, one night. That's hilarious. I don't put that on my resume, but we've brought it up on this show, like this channel, like nice. five times now because it was so funny. I like dissociated <laughs> through this. Yeah, we've been around the theater block together. Yes, we um, have. Janka, you want to start us off? Yeah. On our, our How first did you question? get into dance and choreography? <laughs> so it all started back like in junior high when. I just had friends who did it and I was terrified of singing and oh. I just kind of went in just because I wanted to hang out with my friends and I kind of picked up more on the movement than the singing. So I was like, okay, I can kind of fit into this world of theater and they just kind of kept pushing me to do shows and I just kind of loved doing it. And that was kind of the beginning of it all, mostly through dance. And yeah, after junior high, then it was high school, then it was community theater where mm -hmm. I met you and that was kind of like the... The lead in and the lead and, in, yeah. And dance was always like your favorite of the yeah, three. Yeah, it was. Well, like, it kind of came like naturally to me more than the other things. Yeah. And I got always like good feedback on it. And I just, it, it felt right to me, like to yeah. express myself that way. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. What was okay. the first show you were in? It was School of Rock. Junior. Oh, it really? was like, you know, that like educational, like TV series, like, wait, yeah. is it School of Rock oh, or School oh, House like Rock? School House Rock. Rock. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It was that. And so not even really a musical, but <laughs> after that, it was Once on This Island, which oh. now we know I shouldn't have been in. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I was also in that and shouldn't have been. <laughs> yeah. So, but oh, okay. it was, I mean, it was so fun. Yeah. That was a blast. And I found my community through theater. Definitely That's for great. sure. So, nice. so where does the choreography piece come? So you yeah. got really great at dance and when I started doing more and more shows and I got really excited about who my choreographer was going to be and how I was going to get to dance in the show and things like that. I started to get picky on who I wanted to choreograph yeah. my show. So I was like, okay, I really want to work with this person. I really want to work with this person. And then I just started realizing like, well, I can do this and I can like be in charge and have a say. And, and I think I, you know, know what looks good. Yeah. When, what goes on stage. So I was like, I'm just going to start asking around choreographing things on my own and seeing who will let me yeah. choreograph a show. Yeah. And the Zig is actually where I got my start. Yeah. And I started with junior shows and things like that. And then I remember asking to do Annie 
which was like their one of their main stage productions. That was the first one you did. That was the first wow. one I okay. choreographed, and I was like, I slay at this. I'm so good. So yeah, <laughs> you were. You are. So um, you but, had the leadership to like get people to learn it. And yes, it's funny. We he choreographed Mamma Mia as well. <laughs> we were at that callback. You guys, we were. both were at that callback. Oh my gosh. And Brian's dancing. He teaches very fast <laughs> and it's very like, it's not easy dance. Like to be yeah. honest, like it's, I'm sorry. I, no, I mean, it's don't don't sorry. Me is like a dance show. So it should have like incredible yeah, that's choreography, sure. but, but yeah, Jake and I looked at each other and we were like, <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? We both are not <laughs> that's dancers. Hilarious. And so oh my gosh. we had our butts kicked by you. Uh, I'm glad we did. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that was so fun. Oh my gosh. I, Mama yeah. Mia is like one of my favorite shows I've choreographed because that was the first show I really got to like really bring to the table what I had because you know Anna yeah. you have to like teach orphans and you have to like you know limit what you can do and then <laughs> yeah. Mama Mia was like let's go crazy yeah so just absolutely yeah. that was so fun. oh my gosh out. yeah I forgot about that yeah <laughs> at the old at the academy there's nothing in this world that gives me more anxiety than a dance callback <laughs> See, and that's what I love. Right. It's, it's the singing for me. I can't. And see, that's where I'm just like, yeah, give it to me. Let's freaking jealous. sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, okay. Nowadays mm -hmm. that you've done choreographing and performing, do you have a preference between one or the other now? That's a good question. I, my passion for performing is so big. I love it so much. When I think it's time for me to take a break from that, I feel so ready to start a project and be creative in choreographing. It fulfills like my, my creation like need, bug, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Because when I'm performing, it's just like, I just show up and you still create, but like, it's kind of like, you're just being told what to do and then you show up yeah. and then you just go do it. When I choreograph, I just, I love to get that outlet out there. And you get a lot more it's invested back in the big picture, Yes, right? yes. Inve yeah. Invested in the big picture. I get to have a say artistically in the show, but then I'll do that for a little bit and then I'll miss performing again. So it's kind of like <laughs> so back just, and forth. Yeah. So, Neither yeah. one is really beats the other. They just, exactly. just like yeah. them both. What's a show that you've seen that like has really inspired you in terms of dance or choreography Ooh. when yeah. i was little my aunt would take me to the nutcracker mm. and ballet like in general was just so such a foreign thing to me yeah i was like oh that looks fun that looks cool and then i was like in my head done myself down to i could do something a little bit less than that but then <laughs> i found myself you know taking ballet classes in college and doing that sort of thing and just that performative like experience i just i just loved that so i think that kind of was a good nice gateway into that was that in in ogden like at the it was in salt lake oh, actually salt lake? yeah it was oh, okay. like the big ballet of west one they do oh, here yeah. so that was awesome and then the more community shows i watched i just you just kept getting I just more, loved, more yeah. inspired yeah okay nice and now on the next segment of the show we're gonna we're gonna play a game called finish that lyric <laughs> shoot okay <laughs> now that you've already told us that you are a dancer not so much enjoying the singing part yeah we're gonna test but, you here we go <laughs> i've picked shows that you should know okay the shows that you've choreographed i kind of block things out after <laughs> i do them so let's just let's see if i got this let's see let's see first one and i'm gone and i'm done blank no more fat old men denying me my pay. No more lion. Wait, and that's I'm almost. There's one more. Say the first part again. And I'm gone. And I'm gone. And I'm done. And I'm done. And I'm done. Blank, blank. Something. No more lion. No more fat old man denying me my pay. Yeah. Shoot. There's one little thing before no more lying. <laughs> so close. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. You're so close. And I'm done. And I'm gone. No more. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's no more running. No, no more, more running. No more lion. But almost though. So close. That's half a point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Half yeah, a yeah, point. Yeah. Half yeah. a point. From Newsies, of course. Newsies. Okay, next one is, I saw your book at blank under a sign that said new and recommended. <laughs> Guys, you know why I chose this? Because I remember this time per particularly when we were driving in the car together and this song played and you were belting. Yeah, I do that. You were in the car this. is where I feel the most confident. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was great. <laughs> Wait, say it again. I saw your book at blank. Under a sign that said new and recommended. You got this. You got this. Guys, I'm going to watch this. Oh, wait. Oh, Summer in Ohio. That's what that's, it's from. That's it. That's uh -huh. it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Book under new and recommended. Under, under a sign that said new target. and recommended. <laughs> <laughs> is it so Target? No. It is a store. <laughs> so it was, I saw your book at a Borders in Kentucky. Oh, gosh. You guys. <laughs> I wish she said Target, I'm just, though. Sometimes I muddle through songs and I don't even know what I'm singing. So Yeah. I That's okay. It. I don't know if I would have even gotten them. It's probably been a while too. Yeah. Like it, this was, we're I'm, talking I'm like seven years ago. New songs now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We got, we got two more for you. You come on with it. Come on. You don't fight fair, don't but that's okay. Fair. See if I care. Blank. I'll get right back on my feet again. 
See, <laughs> I don't think I was the person for this game. That's I, okay. I'm don't, sorry. That's I, okay. You give it a okay, your all. No, I'm enjoying this though because oh, she's shoot. bringing back some memories. Yes. You played this role. Give me a hint. You sang this song <laughs> in a show. I, I'm not. I've only done that a couple Actually, times. Actually, so it's is a duet. So it might okay. have been the, the oh, female part. Okay, I got this. Knock me down. Knock me Knock down. Knock me down. It's all in vain. In vain. You were there. You were there. there. You got it. You nice. got it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Rock I didn't of sing Ages, it. Franz. That's crazy. Yeah. I love that show. I don't know if you sang that or if Regina Knock sang me that down, part. See if I can get by back on my feet again. Hit me with your best Oh, yeah, shot. I sang it. You sang that yep. part. Okay, great. <laughs> yep. We nailed it. He was Sorry, more busy on no. the dancing and ripping off his... Uh, you got to just get through the callback and get the part, and then you just... <laughs> and you fake it till you make it. fake it till you make it. Movie stars find the end of the rainbow with a blank. It's so different from the world I'm living in. Movie stars... This one, like the others, I felt like it was like, okay, I should know this, but this one, I'm like, I, I have no idea. It's okay. Honestly, I don't even know what this is. I might have picked like a weird part of the song. Okay. Um, was it a show I was in as well? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you choreographed this one. Oh. This, it's from Give Me, Give Me, Give Me, A Man After Midnight. Oh. Oh. I chose like a verse part that wouldn't be like super easy. That's you know? hard. Now you know what you're working with. <laughs> That's okay. So that um, one was find the end of the rainbow with a fortune to win. I would have I, never gone. <laughs> I, I read it and I was like, I don't know. What this is. That's oh on me. Gosh. I picked a weird part. I'm sorry. But, okay. Oh, that, that's one of my favorite songs I've choreographed. I love. I know. That I remember seeing like you. That was so fun. Like editing your reel. Like some of the yeah the phrases in that were really really awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, so you ended with. I'm gonna watch this back and be so pissed. <laughs> minus two hundred and forty three points. <laughs> um, but we'll get back to it next yep. time. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was a finish that lyric. Now we're gonna pivot to some other questions about ASL. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Tell us about your story and your experience growing up with deaf family members and learning and using ASL from a young age. I'm so happy that I know ASL, first of all. I just think that everyone should know ASL or at least mm -hmm. the alphabet or some degree of ASL because it's really important. But it, it was like hard. I'm not going to lie. When I was a kid, like being the firstborn of two deaf parents, I had to interpret for a lot of like mature situations and it how was, old were you when you had to learn like I, I mean it was my first language essentially oh, so yeah, yeah I was like just really young. yeah I was communicating yeah. with my parents like when I was born so yeah um, I learned English like spoken English through yeah. like my grandparents school television things like that so I don't remember learning ASL I it was just always kind of like at the same time as English so yeah that nice. was kind of what it was like when I was younger but I always thought it was this kind of cool thing but then along with it came like stressful scenarios yeah. and you know mm -hmm. things like that but it was unique childhood for sure so yeah yeah Tienka's she's got um my, my cousin AJ both. um his parents are both deaf and he's, oh nice yes he's not, same boat as you same thing nice. yeah and he, he does very he have any other deaf sentiment. people in the family mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah oh, my wow. whole that whole side of the family is all deaf and I lived wow. with them for a little while that's awesome and, yeah. yeah usually it's like very like right one gene after the other but mm -hmm. and then sometimes it just skips it but yeah my yeah. parents are deaf and then no one else in my family is deaf mm -hmm. so crazy I got to meet them this summer and uh -huh. we, we pulled up a couple of clips of the Newsies ASL that, oh, yeah. I thought it that was you did. So cool. Oh, awesome. And I'm glad. Yes. So that's awesome. cool. Yeah. I, yeah, my parents loved it too. I think that was so fun to do. Yeah. We're going to talk about yeah. that more in a little bit, but. And I think going back to like my nervousness with singing and like being vulnerable through voice, I think that maybe had something to do with oh, that. I'm I don't sure. know. That comes yeah. up a lot. Like yeah. how like me signing is kind of connected to like my expression through dance and totally. movement. So I think that. I love that. Well, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. So so expressive. I mean, yeah. the the move, the hand movements and everything is just a small mm -hmm. part of it. There's so yep. much well, facial, yeah. body language, yes. facial Grammar expressions, and your eyebrows even. Like, yeah. that's, that's oh, crazy. Yeah. It is. It's so layered and nuanced and really powerful and cool. Yeah, yeah. and I know um, so Newsies you did mm -hmm. and um, some other things, and it's really cool that the Zigfield Theater has kind of taken this this uh, ASL format for shows, doing full ASL shows yep. um, for the community, which is huge. And I know that um, with uh, Newsies too, it got a lot of press. Even had deaf actor Millicent uh, Simons from Quiet Place come. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that whole journey yeah. for you. Well, first of all, I that was such a fun show to do and it was like so rewarding to like see it at least come to an end before COVID you yeah. know ended it but uh oh, yeah yeah that, that was, was rough. so rough um but 
it started with them asking me to choreograph Newsies. And this was before they had even decided to add the ASL oh, wow. element into it. And, and so I think the artistic director was like, let's make this interesting and make, make it all ASL. And I was like, mm, I don't know about that. So I like wrote this whole list of like questions, concerns. Like I, I, I almost said no to do wow. it because I was it's just like. It's a huge ask. It is. It huge. is. It's you have to incorporate their singing and dancing at the same time and you have to use your hands and then change the, like, you know what I mean? It's just, mm -hmm. it's so. It's a daunting challenge. Yes, it is. But, and, you, but you stepped up. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. In a huge way. <laughs> yeah. So I, tell us about, it was, yeah. It was scary mostly because I wanted to not sacrifice the ASL, which I mean, to a degree happens anyway, but I wanted to represent a culture that I'm not necessarily fully in because I'm, I'm not deaf. So I don't know what that's like. And it's, it's hard. You don't want to like cause offense, but you also want to put on a good show and you want to yeah. like make sure every, everyone's happy, which was like, I mean, I've done two ASL shows now and, and there's just no making everyone happy. So Hunchback was the other one, right? No, it was Wizard of Oz. Oh, right, right, right. Yes, right. yeah. I remember filming that one as well. Yeah, oh, I mean, you said, like, it's a world I don't know about. Like, I don't know what it's like to be deaf, but the fact that they had you, you know more better than most people. Right. And so the fact Which that Which is they... why I felt like I couldn't say no. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, so You're I felt special to be able to, like, have that unique perspective of being able to, like, bring dance to the table and ASL. Yeah. And I think that I did a lot of good for certain people in the community and got a lot of good feedback. And Millicent Simmons, I she's so awesome. I, I just I knew she lived in Utah and this was a stretch, but I just like messaged a bunch of deaf actors I knew. And I knew specifically she lived in Utah. So yeah. I was like, whatever, she won't reply. She just replied just to my DM. And I was like, OK, I'll come I'll here with my family. Uh, that's so cool. Yeah. I didn't know you reached out to her. I didn't know yeah. that's that's great. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so she was in a quiet place, yep. you know, at like huge She's doing movie. Big things now, yeah. And she came and supported. I didn't know she lived in Utah either. Yeah, not yeah. anymore, I don't think, but yeah. Yeah. She was she was so great. What was it like in that production like teaching, choreographing, making actors that are not deaf learn ASL and perform with it? Like because you figured it out because on stage, <laughs> uh Dylan, the guy that played yeah. uh, uh Jack Kelly, yes. he was just signing his heart out and just like they were all killing it in the sign language and so like was that pretty hard to teach them it was like we were all going through a trauma together <laughs> like yeah. they were thrown so much and i still look back at that show with such awe for them because as an actor if i didn't know sign language and i was having to do all that i just would be so stressed out which yeah. they were but i feel like once you get to a certain point in the process you just you just want to have it you know be so good and they just they really did just show up and they put all they had into it and then they came together as a family and also they were part of hearing and deaf actors in the show so i feel like when you're kind of surrounded by that people were starting to like communicate with each other through sign and they didn't that even helps. realize wow. it. Like, it's like you learn so many signs and so many it's words. It's like living in another country where right. you yes. start to. And then yeah. they just don't even realize how well they're conversing with each other. And I think that was a big part of it was the community of that show, as well as just them feeling like they were doing something completely new. Yeah. That's so cool. That's such an amazing journey, I bet. And yeah. not only like the challenge that you went through to, to, to put it on, but then the show itself was so stunning. Like I filmed Thank the you. whole show because this, this show is happening right when COVID hit so they had they had me come in and do a full filming and so that they could do like a stream of it so that yes. people could watch it and not not have to intend in person which was cool but then it was still super tragic because even after that they had put in so much work and built this beautiful show and then covid hit and they had to shut it down how many shows did you get to do so we did almost the entire run of the ogden run and so it was set to go on tour to Park City right. right after that. So I think we were like one weekend away from being oh. done with the Ogden run. It was like almost the whole yeah. thing. And then the next week was Tech Week for Park City. And they and canceled we it. just canceled. Yeah. That sucks that you guys didn't get to take it to Park City because yeah. that's so much fun to do. That would have been, that would have been awesome. But, but and just at least you got because some. I wanted some more exposure. But I mean, because we were just like yeah. accelerating at such a fast pace with such like the press and everything that you were saying. Yeah. So it was, it was awesome. Well, well, you put so much work into it yeah. too. Yeah. But I mean, the filmed version, I watched Jake edit it and mm -hmm. was just like blown away. Oh, thank by you. All that's of nice. The performances. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a super cool thing you did. We're going to talk about another really cool thing you did. Okay. Ooh. We're going to pivot to your career portraying Draco Malfoy <laughs> in the Ziegfeld's Fairly Potter franchise. Can we call it a franchise? Yeah, Probably not. I think so. Can oh, we? Yeah. 
It was. Yeah. It, it went on multiple years. Yes. It sold we did a, a lot we of did tickets. We did a fun music video for it. Other theaters have done it. It's a franchise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Other theaters licensed it, huh? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. So how many total years did you play Draco? And what was the most special thing about playing such an iconic character? <laughs> Well, and it uh, was iconic. Like, I was, <laughs> he was he was cunty. Yes, he was, was. sassy. Yes, he was you. serving uh, <laughs> every night. I oh my god, that was so fun. Oh my god, and I was playing Harry most of the time, other than one year. Oh my god, yeah, with you, you did. And so we were literally pitted against Ron, each other, what, or Lon or Don or whatever his name. Yeah, they changed the changed the names for legal reasons. Legal reasons. So we did that first one together, which was not the Christmas twenty thirteen, just the regular, just the regular parody one. Yes, and then yeah. I did it four years after that. For so the five Christmas, total? Five total. Oh yeah. my gosh. Five years of playing Draco Malfoy. Yep. What did you love most about it? And what did you hate most about I, it? <laughs> well, I was very new to this theater when the first show happened. So As was I. I yeah. went. It's where we met. Not it is. Yeah. I was not expecting even to like be in the show, let alone be cast as this like role that was going to be like so popular. <laughs> I, <laughs> he, the director Rick had told me that his vision for Draco was like the super gay flamboyant cunty. Yes, just exactly. Yeah. Full Metro. Yes. I yeah. just honestly just brought my alter ego to the table. I was just like, <laughs> I'll just read it how I kind of feel like inside. So, um, <laughs> and then, and it, that was that. And I, I guess he loved it. And we all did. It was just, I it felt natural to play very much. So, yeah. So. And so you, did you, you love the sassiness of I it? I love the sassiness of he it. He was just so sassy. Yes. And I did not expect the reaction, even like from the producer standpoint, but from the audience, because we did that first year and everyone loved everything about the show. But then the second I walked on the first night as Draco Malfoy, when we did it the second year, the crowd. Go, like, I had a crazy like applause, and I was not used to that. And I was like, "This is insane." Yeah, because in this the community, so the Zigfoot like this, like people started to under like it was going on each year, so like they would expect to see these same yes. actors every year. Yep. So it it happened for me a couple times, like mm -hmm. come out and people were like, "Oh yeah, I know yep. him." And then, but cool for Brian, classic. it was like it way is, more. Yes. It was like huge oh my gosh. applause, and like it. It was such a fun part to play and you just got to do whatever you want with it. And just, it's, it's just fun. The whole, like there was like this, the subplot Draco, the reason why he was such so bitchy to Harry is because he was in love with him. Yeah. And we had just this tension thing and it was so and much fun. And in the fun. Christmas ones, there was Rudolph the reindeer who was like this like <laughs> cool high school new guy. I don't know. It was kind of weird yeah. looking back, but uh, <laughs> I, had a, I was supposed to fall in love with Ru Rudolph, but it yeah. was, it was fun. It was so cool. What was your least favorite thing about playing the role? Because I, we spent a lot of hours together playing that role and there yes. were so many times when you're like I'm dude I'm freaking <laughs> done with this I'm done okay well first of all the expectation because I was like I'm like too stressed out to keep playing this because everyone loves it so much and we had a new cast every year besides mm -hmm. like a few staple people who came back to do it yeah so I was like I gotta like earn my right to stay in this role and that was like stressful. It was an evolving script all the time. So mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, that's probably the case with any show that's being written in the moment is you have new pages to learn or you're crossing something out or you're changing blocking or scenes or completely adding new songs. And that was like, so every crazy. year you're just like, yeah. okay, it's different. How it's is very it going to be different? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it's also like during, it was a Christmas show for the most part. And so the entire Christmas season, we are at the theater. Like, yes, we don't was hard. have much of a, a, a Christmas break. It's we're It's all it, that show is actually all volunteer. So we, mm -hmm. there, we weren't getting paid. Yeah. It was a huge time commitment. Yeah. As I got older, I, started to value my time more in that way. Yeah. Like yeah. when, we, when we first met, I feel like theater was so unserious and then like the best way, like it was, we just wanted to spend all of our time together, just the whole community. And I remember just like mm -hmm. being done with rehearsals and then we would just set up like, a projector and watch movies and hang out all hang night. Out, like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, as, so as time went on, I was like, this is a commitment. And I would do like three shows at a time and just, mm -hmm. it was stressful. So yeah. It just got to the point where you're like, I got to hang up the Draco blonde wig. Yeah. Well, and just like, I didn't want to kill a good thing. You know what I mean? I just like, I didn't want to beat it into the ground. So I was like, you I got to walk away while you're on my top. fifth and final year. And then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a good decision because I think, yeah, when you, when you are just so bent on doing the same thing over and over again, the, like it's just, it is what it is. The quality started to drop and fairly it did. And it's because of those same reasons. Like you're not going to get your, the actors that made it popular to come back. If, right. You know, it was, yeah, not respecting people's time and like, we all know how it went. Yeah. But yeah. I'm very grateful for the time I had though. That was so fun. <laughs> it was just Especially so, we had beginning. so many good times. Yeah. We really did. It was awesome. And we brought a lot of, a lot of Christmas joy to a lot we of people. Did. 
Harry Potter Christmas joy. Kelly, my friend, our friend Kellyanne yeah. still talks about the scene we did with like the Pokemon. Oh my gosh. The final dance, like chess Pokemon go whenever that I was popular. I want to cut to it right now. <laughs> Thank you. I remember thinking that I was like, I feel so dumb doing this. And I was just like, we were being so goofy on stage. And then Kelly, our friend was like, that was the funniest thing I've ever fucking seen. Like <laughs> she loved it so much. She still brings it up to this day. It was a wild and unhinged scene. Yeah. <laughs> We were in the Chamber of Secrets. It was the year that Pokemon Go had just exploded on the world. So we did a chore choreographed number to the Pokemon theme song. I want to be the very the best. To catch the Basilisk, right? To catch the Basilisk with Pokemon Go. And there were like beach app. balls that we that were just spray painted. And we were just like, <laughs> like Pokemon them at them. Yeah. Pokeball <laughs> painted. Well, all while just dancing and dancing to that Pokemon theme song. Homoerotic. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was yes. so wild. I yeah, that full show is is on this channel, so go watch that. Yes. Okay, Draco Malfoy, what a time. We're gonna put you on the spot again. <laughs> okay. We've got another segment for you, Perfect. and it is Tell, Tell us, us your, your top, top three. three. I so. love to judge. <laughs> <laughs> We've got three categories, and I want to know your top three for each of them. Okay. So first, shows you've choreographed. Ooh, okay. Mama Mia, I would say, mm -hmm. was like prime. It was so good. That, like, was, that was so fun. Yeah. Number Mama one. Mia. Newsies, I feel like has to be up there because it was, it was so it beautiful. Was stressful, but it was beautiful. It was fun, rewarding. Yeah. Probably Annie, I would say, just because it was like special because I was like trying to prove myself and it was like my first one. Mm -hmm. I just had a fun time and I, yeah. I loved the people that were in it and it was just simple and just not stressful and it was just so fun. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Probably those three. Good Excellent. answers. Okay. Next top three. Roles you've played. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. This is fun because I've played roles that I never thought I would get to play or roles I'd never even heard of before. So it, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> Franz is up there. Okay. I would say Rocky Horror. Oh my gosh, I forgot about Rocky Horror. Brad. I'm going to change Rocky Horror and Annie, by the way, because okay. I also choreographed that one. You choreographed uh, and were in that one. Yes, You played Brad, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Brad was so fun. So I'm going to say that's probably actually number one because that's like the biggest lead I've ever done. And You did it, awesome. It was, that it was that show was great. Yes. Uh, okay. So Brad, Franz. I've got some like little ones that I just were so fun, like Bobby and Cabaret slash like baby John West Side Story. They're like kind of smaller, but like just like but the still. vibes of the show and they were so dancey. Yeah. I would say that was like probably my top three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Th those two are tied for three. Okay. Not counting Draco Malfoy, of course, because right. he's you know, just an honorary mention. He's just, yeah. He's just a miscellaneous, like <laughs> he exists in his own category yeah. of <laughs> cuntiness. He wouldn't want to be compared. No, you can't put him in a box. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's spooky time and there are yes. a lot of spooky musicals out there. What mm -hmm. are your top three? I think Hunchback is kind of a spooky musical. Totally. In it's my really opinion. Spooky. Yeah, like Hellfire is so scary to oh, me. Oh, yeah. Frollo, the whole vibes. But I mm -hmm. think that is one of my favorites. Okay. I don't know if it does count as a spooky one. But hey, if that's I'm something you like it. watching at spooky yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Rocky Horror, I think, is just a classic one to yes. have at Halloween. It's and it's just so yes. good. Our number one favorite is Sweeney Todd. <gasps> oh, my gosh. That's probably our number one. Spooky. I love Sweeney Todd. Yeah. I have never seen the musical. I've only seen the movie. So Ooh, I feel like really? I can't really like claim okay, it to we be gotta one of my favorites. If we see a production, we should all go to Invite me because I want to I want to see it. Oh, well, the Zig is doing it, actually. So They are. Oh, yeah. We could go see their production. Yeah, yeah. I... Oh, I love that musical. Okay, we'll have to go see it. It's really good on stage. Okay. It's better on stage. Well, I'm just going to say it because I just love it so much. Okay, great. I influenced you. Yes. Sweeney is... You can't be Sweeney for a Halloween. What do they do around fall time? Like Jekyll and Hyde. Adam's Family. Adam's Family. Fan of the Opera is pretty spooky. Yeah. I'm going to stick to my three. Okay. I think that's a solid three. Those, those are great. Those, <laughs> those are, are two great. of my top three as well. Rocky yeah. and Sweeney. Nice. Yeah. What can people expect from you next, Brian? Any big aspirations Ooh. on the horizon or projects to bring up? I don't know. Yes. I have some ideas of what I want to do next year. Okay. I want to kind of go back into my dance era. Someone's doing chorus line, cats. Ooh. I want to just kind of get back into dancing because I just feel like old. <laughs> And I just don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to like, like do the splits even. Like right. I, I just, it's, it's not the same as I once was. I want to just do it as much as I can now. And yeah. then, you know, maybe choreograph. I've, 
I had you make a reel for me and I want to like put, put my name out there for theaters to kind of hire me on as a choreographer. So well, where can people see your stuff? Instagram, Instagram is like a perfect place. BT Andrews 93. I'm always just bouncing around like from theater to theater. So like cool. I'll, I kind of usually post about all my stuff that I'm doing. Nice. And okay. that's a really good place for you to see just my work. follow him on yeah. Instagram, guys. Follow me on Instagram. Here? One we more question. A, yeah, we have a question that we ask everyone, which is how do you measure success? When I was younger, I feel like my answer was much different because I I would say like, you know, it was very much in comparison yeah. and I hate that. And I, I struggle with that a lot. I think now I think my answer would be in fulfillment. Like, I feel like if it makes you really happy and you aren't dreading your time while doing it, not even if you're happy with a product at the end, but like you don't regret doing it. Yeah. I feel like that's what measures success. And if you're just, I mean, yeah, that's such a basic answer, but it's oh, I love people, no, I love over, that. people overlook that so much. So comparison I, is the thief of joy. That's exactly, what people say. Yeah. So, no, yeah. So the fact that you, you said it on your own terms, right. And mm -hmm. you just, yeah, that makes sense. Well, and that's so nice too, because I feel like so many people measure success in a way that's like very external and it, it's dependent on other people or and numbers that are yeah, arbitrary success that's outside of you. Whereas that's very like internal. Like if you feel good, amazing, right. you're successful. So yes. I love that. Thank you. That's yeah. a great answer. That's, that's what I think. So, okay. well, everybody, this is Brian Andrews. We love him so much, Brian. I love thanks you. so much for doing this. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. If you like the video, go ahead and like, and subscribe. And we're going to be back with new content all the time. Thanks for watching hold harmonics and we'll catch you next time. Goodbye.